Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by, and today we're going to be talking about Math 120, Section 7.1, and this section is all about the metric system. Now, we'll start by reading a little bit of a brief introduction. The United States is one of three countries that has not adopted the metric system as its national system of measurements. We're one of only three. Um, off the top of my head, I cannot remember the other two. However, the metric system is still used in many aspects of American life. We see the metric system, right? When we look at soda bottles or things like that, we see liters on the soda bottles sometimes, right? We see kilometers when we're talking about races, right? A 5K race is 5 kilometers. But the primary means of measurement in the U.S. is the U.S. customary system. In this section, we'll look at the basics of the metric system. First, what are some advantages of the metric system? The first big advantage is it's used worldwide, which makes it extremely useful for international trade and travel. The metric system is extremely useful if you want to travel abroad or if you ever plan on having a business that trades with other countries, right? Because those other countries will expect measurements in metric, right? So it's good to know the metric system so you can um, have a more worldly view, right? In the metric system, each physical quantity has exactly one measurement associated with it. That's not true for the U.S. customary system. For example, if we're talking about length, if we're measuring length, in metric, the only measurement is the meter. That is the only measurement in metric for length. But in the U.S. system, we have inches, uh, feet, yards, miles, we have all sorts of different measurements for length in the U.S. system, right? But in the metric, it's just meters. Now, the metric system is based on the number 10. That's going to be really helpful for us because the numbers we work with in day-to-day -day life are based on 10, right? Think about it. Our number counting system is based on 10, right? We are based in 10. So the metric system is based on the same set of numbers that we regularly use. It's based in 10, just like the numbers we use to count. To convert between different units in the metric system, we need only use multiples of 10. We just have to use multiples of 10, factors of 10, right? Everything is in terms of 10. This is not true in the US system. For example, there's 12 inches in a foot. That's based on the number 12. Or 3 feet in a yard. That's based on the number 3. Or 1,760 yards in a mile. That one's based on 1760. It's not consistent in the U.S. system. But in the metric system, it's always in 10. Now, there's four things we commonly like to measure in metric. And the first is length, which for length, we use the meter. And the meter is signified with the letter M. And it is the common unit of length. How long is a meter? It's a little more than a yard. If you know how long a yard is, a meter is a smidge longer. Now, for mass, for mass, we use grams. We use grams for mass, which has the symbol G. And a gram isn't very much weight maybe a penny. It's not a ton of weight. A gram is kind of small. It's not a lot of weight. Then for liquid, we have the liter, which uses the letter L. I always like to write my L in cursive, and that's a general practice just because, you know, a print L can kind of look like the number one. So generally, we try and use a cursive L just to make sure we know it's liters. And these three are the big three we are going to focus on. We're also, we've considered it already. We've already seen it in our other chapter. We saw the conversion for Fahrenheit to Celsius when we were working in chapter six. But for temperature, the metric system uses degrees Celsius. And the reason we use degrees Celsius, Celsius, the reason we use Celsius is because it's based on water. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. It's nice and easy to work with Celsius when you're talking about water, right? So the main three we'll be focusing on for this chapter are meters, grams, and liters. That is what we'll mainly be focusing on. 
Now, we got a little bit of reading again. It says, now, in order to scale these base units into quantities that are larger or smaller. Now, we know, or we may not, but we uh, hopefully have heard of some other metric units. Meters can be shifted to be larger or smaller by adding prefixes. It makes use of prefixes to do this. These prefixes tell us which factor of 10, how much multiples of 10, or how much um, do we need to shift by. Right? It tells us what power of 10 we are using. For example, you might have heard kilometer before. Notice it's kilo and meter. The prefix is kilo, the unit is meter. The word kilo means 1,000 times the base unit. A kilo is 1,000 times. Therefore, one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. One kilometer is 1,000 meters. They're both in the same unit. They're both meters. The word kilo is just a prefix to help us shift the numbers into more appropriate ranges, right? Kilometers are much more useful for measuring longer distances, where meters are much more useful for measuring shorter distances. Now, on the next page is a table which has a few of the most common prefixes used in the metric system. And this table here will be exceptionally useful. Notice it has kilo, hecto, deca, deca, centa, and milli. And notice the symbols, K, H, D, A, D, C, and M. The middle part is for the base unit. Notice a kilo is 1,000 of the base unit. Hecto is 100 the base unit. Deca is 10 times the base unit. Then we have the base unit, meter, gram, liter, something of that nature, right? Then we have deca, which is one-tenth of the base unit. Centa, which is one one-hundredth. And milli, which is one one-thousandth. So let's take a look at this table and fill in the blanks here. A centimeter is blank of a meter. Well, a centimeter is one one-hundredth of a meter, right? It's one one-hundredth. How about a hectometer? A hectometer is 100 meters, right? It's 100 times the base unit. Let's look at liters. A milliliter is 1 1,000th one of a base unit, 1 1,000th one of a liter. And a decaliter, well, deca is 10, so that'll be 10 liters. So it's important that we understand these prefixes and the order they go in. It's important to know it goes kilo is the biggest, that's a thousand, hecto is ten, deca is or sorry, hecto is a hundred, deca is ten, deca is one tenth, centi is one one hundredth, and milli is one one thousandth. It's a good thing to get in the habit of memorizing these six values and how they relate. Now Changing units within the metric system is extremely easy if you keep the fact that decimals and multiples of 10 work in a similar manner. To change from a smaller unit to a larger unit. So you're going up the chart. You're starting from the bottom and moving towards the top, right? For example, meters to kilometers, right? Meters would be here, kilometers is up here. You're going from small to bigger. Move the decimal place in the original quantity, one place left for each larger unit of measurement until you obtain the desired unit of measurement. So if I was going from meters to kilometers, I have to move one, two, three steps up, right? Because deca, hecta, kilo. So I have to move three steps up in that example. So I'd move the decimal place three steps left. Now, two, to change from a larger unit to a smaller unit, so you're going from top to bottom now, you're starting from a larger unit and moving down to a smaller unit, right? Move the decimal point in the original quantity one place to the right for each smaller unit of measurement until you obtain the desired unit of measurement. All you're doing is hopping the decimal place around. And so I'm going to keep bringing this page back, both with this table and with this procedure, so it may be useful for you to keep it on the side as well. Now, convert 
457.3 meters to kilometers. Well, the first thing I notice is I'm going from meters to kilometers, right? I'm starting with meters and going to kilometers. That is smaller to larger, right? That's case one, smaller to larger. So I know I'm moving the decimal place left, right? I'm moving the decimal place left. All right, well, I'm going to write the number, and I'm going to take the decimal place, and I want to move it left. How many hops did I have to move? Let's see, meters would be right here, right? And I would be going one, two, three hops up. So I'll move one, two, three hops to the left. So my new number will be, let's see, I'll put a zero out front to keep myself organized, right? Four, five, seven, three. Notice the decimal place is now here. Kilometers. So 0 0.4573 kilometers is the same as 457.3 meters. Notice it's all the same digits. The decimal place just moved. That is how all metric conversions will work. Let's look at the next example. Convert 14 grams to centigrams, right? C is centa. Well, I'm going from grams to centigrams. So first I notice I'm going from large to small, right? Larger to smaller. Larger to smaller. I'm going to move to the right. How many hops? Let's see. Grams would be here at the base unit, and centa is one, two down, correct? Let's see. One, two down, right? So I'll write 14. The decimal place for 14 is right here. Now, I need to shift it to the right because I'm going larger to smaller, and larger to smaller is to the right. So I'll take one hop, two hops to the right. But notice, I have to fill in some values here. We fill in some zeros. I once heard someone say, you put a Cheerio in the bowl, right? You got a little divot here, you put a Cheerio in it. You put zeros in the gaps. Now, the decimal place is now over here, so I have 1,400 centigrams. So 14 grams is the same as 1,400 centigrams. Notice we need to keep in mind which way we are shifting. That's always the first step. So if I want to convert 0 0.53, and I know I'm going from liters to milliliters. This is larger to smaller, right? Liters would be right here, and milliliters is down here. It's one, two, three hops down. Larger to small is to the right, and it was three hops, so I'll make three hops here. One hop, two hops, three hops. Once again, I need to fill in a zero. So this zero out front is no longer needed, right, because the decimal place moved back here. So I have five, three, zero, and let's see, that'll be milliliters. So 0 0.53 liters is 530 milliliters. In our next example, we have 2450 liters, and we want to convert it to kilometers. So let's see, right, 2450, and remember, the decimal place would be at the end, right? And I also want to make sure I remember I'm going from liters to kiloliters, which is smaller to larger, right? Smaller to larger. It's three hops up from liter to kiloliter. So I'll take three hops left, right? Larger to smaller is left. So after three hops left, I get 2.450 kiloliters. Notice the only thing we need to do when converting metric units is remember these prefixes and where they are. Because once you identify which units you're transferring, it is just hopping decimal places, right? We have seen four examples now and notice it's always hopping decimal places. So let's take another look at 704 millimeters and we're converting it to hectometers. So millimeters is down here and hectometers is up here. 
So it's going from smaller to larger, right? Smaller to larger. And it's going up one, two, three, four, five hops. So smaller to larger, I'll start with my decimal place. I need to make five hops left. Five hops left. One, two, three, four, five. So the new decimal place would be out front here, right? And I need to fill in zeros to make my answer. So let's see, in front of the decimal, I always like to put a zero, point zero zero seven zero four hectometers. Notice I had to take five hops because hectometers are quite a bit bigger than millimeters. Millimeters are very, very tiny, right? A millimeter is maybe the width of my pen cap here. A hectometer is 100 meters. That's basically um, the same length. It's not basically. It is exactly the same length as the 100 meter dash on a track. It would take a lot of pen caps. If I take 704 pen caps, that's not going to be one hectometer, right? 704 pens would not add up to the length of a track, right? So I, the answers can make sense. If you think about them a little bit, you can think about the values. If you know how long a meter is, or how long a millimeter is, or how long a hectometer is, you can get a picture in your head. Now, 6.34 dam to dm. Well, 6.34, and we're going from dam to dm. So, I dam is decameters, and dm is decimeters. Be careful, there are two that start with the letter D. Deca and deca. You can remember that the DA is the bigger one because DA is longer than D, right? It's a longer word, a longer um, uh, symbol, right? DA is more letters, so it's larger. So I'm going larger to smaller, right? I'm going down the chart, larger to smaller, and I'm going down two hops. Well, larger to smaller means I move to the right, and I go two hops. So I get 634 dm. So that is converting units. Notice it does not matter what units we are. As long as we remember the prefixes, we can convert all metric units. It's super important to have this table in your mind whenever you're thinking about metric units. Commit it to memory. Sleep with it under your pillow. Make flashcards of these different prefixes and remember where they are. Remember how they relate, which ones are bigger, which ones are smaller, because that tells you how to shift the decimal places. And that is all you have to do to convert between different metric units is shift the decimal places around. You don't need to do any conversions by hand. You can just shift decimals because they're both base 10. That is the, what makes the metric system so easy is because you can just shift decimals around. Once you get the hang of this, it is really quick to convert between different units in the metric system because you're just taking hops left or right to convert. You don't have to divide or multiply or do any of that work. You can just hop left or right. Now, arrange from smallest to largest. And I have 2.3 meters, 3,421 millimeters and 104 centimeters. So I have three different measurements in terms of meters, but one is in millimeters, one is in centimeters, and one is already in meters. If I want to compare these numbers, they all need to have the same unit on them. If I want to compare them, I need to get the same unit first. I always like to put everything in terms of the base unit, in terms of meters. So the first one, will become 2.3 meters. The second one, I want to make it meters. Well, to go from millimeters to meters is smaller to larger, right? If we bring our chart back, it's smaller to larger, right? It's three hops larger. So I'll go one, two, three hops larger, which gives me 3.421 meters. 3.421 meters. I hop left, right? 
than centimeters to get to meters? Well, same thing. Centimeters are smaller than meters, right? This time, it's only two hops, though, right? If we bring our chart back, it's two hops up to meters. So I'll take one, two hops, and I'll get 1.04 centimeters. Or sorry, 1.04 meters, right? 104 centimeters is 1.04 meters. So let's see. This is the smallest, right? 1.04 is smaller than the other one. So 104 centimeters is less than, let's see. Next would be 2.3 meters, right? That would be the next one, is less than 3,421 millimeters. Notice I wrote the original values. I'm comparing the original numbers in my list here, right? Smallest to largest. Notice I didn't use the conversions. Use the original numbers when you list them out because these ones are the ones you're comparing, right? It's asking you to list these numbers smallest to largest, not these numbers, right? These numbers just help us find which is smallest and which is largest. Now, the last thing for this section is just an example of the additional table information. So we already saw this table that gives the first three prefixes in the bigger direction and the first three prefixes in the smaller direction. But sometimes you might need bigger or smaller numbers than these. And this table gives you everything for a ways in both directions. Here's the base unit. So if we put the word base here, this is the base unit, right? Meters, grams, liters. Then on the upscale, you have deca, hecto, kilo, and then mega. Think megabytes, right? Your computer has megabytes at, for data storage, or gigabytes, or terabytes, right? We see these terms in computers. We don't really see these in many other things. You might see megavolts when somebody's talking about a power plant, or you might see um, teraflops when something is talking about a computer processor. But these are usually reserved for extremely large values, like in computers. Data is extremely large, right? Computers can store a large amount of data. And then it keeps going into Peta, Exa, Zeta, and Yada. Yada would be extremely large. Notice, look how big it is. It's one followed by 24 zeros. That is a big number. You can think of mega is million, giga is billion, tera is trillion, peta is quadrillion, exa is quintillion, zeta is sextillion, and then yada is septillion. It gets much bigger quite quickly. So keep that in mind that these ones up here are very large. We don't, we will never really see these in our day-to-day -day lives, right? But up to terabytes we do see, right? Computers store things in terabytes. On the smaller side, we have deca, centa, milli, micro. Think like microorganisms, right? These are very small, micrometers. Very, very tiny, microscopes. Nanometers, think like nanobots, nanotechnology, super small technology, right? Nano is very, very small. Think like on the atomic scale. Same with pico and femto and ato and zepto and yocto. Notice they get very, very small. Point, look at all these zeros before the one, right? These numbers are very, very small. Once again, we will mostly be working with the ones close. These first three in both directions will be the key ones to focus on. The other ones are good to know for when you do need them, but the first three in each direction will be our primary focus, like we saw before. And that brings us to the end of section 7.1. Thank you all for stopping by, and I will see you next time.